Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and this is a bit of a blow to Ripple. Uh, the SEC's request to extend discovery deadline has been granted, and so uh, this is at the expense of Ripple's entire business. Just make this whole case go on longer and longer and longer. And so I'm going to share with you opinions from a couple of attorneys within the XRP community on that. And, uh, and also, we have a new document, court document filed by Ripple today having to do with uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP internal documents and some new articulation as to why uh, that information needs to be shared and ASAP. And also, I think you're going to find it particularly interesting because, frankly, looks to me like the SEC uh, may have shot themselves in the, in the foot a little bit by, by overcharging, so we'll talk about that, as well as what this means, this all means, uh, in terms of settlement or, or, or finally just having a complete judicial outcome. Like, how, how long is this case going to take now? Uh, spoiler alert, a long time. But before we go any further, I do want to be clear, I don't have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who makes YouTube videos as a fun hobby about Ripple and XRP and crypto, and that's all that's going on here, damn it. And so this was a text-only, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Text-only... Uh, order that was granted here. So, well, technically, there are actually um, there are actually three uh, that were issued uh, today. But the the, the most pertinent one here uh, has to do with <clears throat> the ex the extension of the case here. And so, this does mean that there there was no additional uh, a publication or explanation of why uh, why the judge ruled the way that she did here. Um, now, an XRP community member and attorney, James Filan, uh, speculated a little bit, so it's interesting. He wrote, it could be uh, also be as simple as Judge Torres needing additional time to work through the substant uh, substantive motions. So maybe she wondered it for herself, too. I don't know, but, but there's no, there, there is no actual explanation, and I don't think we're going to be getting one. Attorney Jeremy Hogan uh, wrote the following about this. The judge grants SEC's motion for 60 more days to conduct discovery. Not unexpected, but this will push the entire case back 60 days. That would mean, quick calculations, summary judgment sometime in December or January. Um, absent a settlement, this case is going to end in early 2022. This is So I, I tell you what, this is kind of disappointing just um, from a personal perspective. I was hoping to have this thing all buttoned up uh, be before this market cycle is over. Um, and, and granted, it's true, you know, fair enough. We don't know exactly when this market cycle, the bull portion is going to end and we enter bear territory again. But um, I was kind of hoping that we'd have this this legal clarity uh, before we uh, before we enter that phase. But And we still might. We still might. You never know if you're just one day going to wake up and see news of a settlement happening, which um, I I'm still hoping for. Um, XRP community member XR Patients wrote the following, and it resonated with me, so I wanted to share this with you. Uh, SEC had eight years to collect evidence and ignored the judge's orders twice to turn over discovery to Ripple, but the judge grants them the extra 60 days. Does this make sense to anybody? It sure as hell doesn't to me. Yeah, here, here. I'm on the same page with you, my friend. Um, and then there's this. <clears throat> Attorney uh, James Filan shared this on Twitter earlier today. Uh, Ripple Files reply in further support of its motion to compel the SEC to, uh, to turn over internal Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP documents, uh, FinHub emails, and OEIA documents. And so I, I talked about this topic in a very recent video. And I, I, in this specific document, this brand new one, though, I want to highlight uh, what I found to be the most interesting part because there, there, is, there was a request by Ripple in, in uh, the document, I guess probably the, the most recent one before this one, in which they're saying, hey, we want to have internal documents that outline uh, the trading policies uh, for people that work at the SEC. <clears throat> because, of course, if people are holding uh, various cryptocurrencies, you know, there, there could be, um, you know, bias. <laughs> There's certainly, right? Um, a conflict of interest, right? And so then the SEC was insisting that this was completely irrelevant. And, uh, and as a result, they shouldn't have to share that information. And Ripple has articulated their reason why um, that information should be shared. And so I wanted to run through this. And so uh, Ripple's attorneys write the following, um, and they're referencing here <clears throat> the, uh, the, the trading policy. Um, the SEC says that the documents are irrelevant to the issues before the court. That is incorrect. The SEC's own trading policies are likely to show, for example, <clears throat> that the SEC 
did not consider XRP and other digital assets like XRP to be securities, or that the SEC considered XRP to be substantially similar to other digital assets, like Bitcoin, that it has expressly stated are not securities. That is relevant circumstantial evidence of, uh, of what an objective purchaser would have understood about the regulatory status of those digital assets. Now, it also um, evidence uh, that is critical for the individual defendant's defenses against the SEC's allegations of recklessness, which is an objective component. So let me pa pause right there. That's why I was saying at the beginning of this video, the, the SEC may have overcharged. In <laughs> I think they did. In going after Brad Garlinghouse, Ripple CEO, and Chris Larson, uh, you know, co-founder of Ripple, because look, they never even, mind you, they never alleged any fraud, uh, but they still specifically cited them and, uh, you know, and finding them guilty of, of, of what they were charged, like it's actually a pretty gosh darn high bar and evidence can now uh, be entered into in discovery that otherwise would not be admissible. And so that's why it's like, okay, SEC, you done messed up. You were trying to intimidate them clearly by overcharging and it looks like it's coming back to bite you on the rear side. Anyway, so now the, the uh, attorneys continue with their, their, uh, their piece here. Um, if the SEC itself did not classify XRP as a security, that would be highly relevant to the question of whether it should have been, quote, so obvious that it should be known, end quote, to the individual defendants that XRP was a security. Uh, the discovery related to Bitcoin and Ether is relevant as to the objective review of defendants' understanding in thinking about the aiding and abetting charge. And if the relevant law allows for more than one reasonable interpretation, as would be evidenced by the SEC's own interpretation of the law as embodied in its internal policies, a defendant who merely adopts one such interpretation cannot be held liable uh, for recklessly violating the statute. And so there you go. So all of this uh, wouldn't otherwise be relevant, and that's important. This is good for Ripple. This is good for Brad. It's good for Chris. Um, then they continue. SEC has charged the individual defendants with allegedly reckless conduct for the entirety of their respective tenures working for Ripple. If at any point during that period the SEC failed to classify XRP as a security in connection with their own policies, then surely the individual defendants could not have been reckless in believing that XRP was not a security. Yeah, exactly. This is a strong argument, right? Um, and then check this out. This gets, gets even more interesting. The SEC's only objection to this argument is that its internal trading policies were not publicly known and could not have been known to the individual defendants. But this is irrelevant. As a matter of law, all that matters is whether these policies could provide relevant evidence of whether the individual defendants were objectively reckless or whether there was a reasonable interpretation of the statute consistent with the individual defendant's conduct. So there, there you go. Ripple effectively saying it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. If, if it frankly does not matter uh, if the, uh, you know, the public, the, you know, the trading policies weren't known because it speaks to whether, whether or not, uh, you know, XRP is a, is a matter of law. You should have, you should have known uh, that what you're doing is wrong in, in terms of, well, really everything between what Ripple's doing and selling XRP, uh, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson selling their own holdings. Uh, but <laughs> the SEC, they just got an uphill battle now. And so uh, attorney Jeremy Hogan, uh, he read through that and then he shared the following on Twitter. Again, the SEC's decision to sue Garlinghouse and Larson bites them in the butt. And then in parentheses, he writes, that's the legal term. <laughs> uh, Ripple wants the SEC's own trading guidelines. And I would bet they do not say don't trade XRP. Without the individual defendants, those documents are probably not relevant. So there you go. Thank you for overcharging, SEC. It has been a gift. <laughs> oh, you guys tell me what you think in the comment section below. But I, I will say this. It's, it's kind of a bummer to see this all stretched out. But I, I, I think in the end, this is not going to have an impact on whether or not justice is done. Either justice will be done or it won't. And I'm optimistic that it will. I think most of the time... Uh, you know, things are more right than they are wrong, right? So, so I'm, I, I'm certainly still an optimist, uh, but uh, we're going to be a little extra patient unless we actually do see settlement. Holding out hope, though. <laughs> I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.